<laughs> Hello, our friends. I'm Adamo. And I'm Steph. And this is 2D Adamo. And this is 2D Steph. Today, we're going to be trying an art challenge which is inspired by Love to Draw Mind. It was awesome. She did this collab with her sister, which was extremely wholesome. We thought we could try that because we're a couple. We're a couple, so uh, I, I hope I do a good job on this one. Okay, so step one is to generate oh. three random words. Oh, God. <laughs> and we both have to do this because we're both going to be starting a picture. So there's going to be two pictures building up at the same Over time. Over time, yeah, that's right. Number of words, so three. Okay, so word types. We've got nouns, verbs, adjectives, extended, and non English. Non English! <laughs> okay, so generate three adjectives. Okay. Ooh. Infamous, pale, and agreeable. <laughs> that was what the hell are you doing? Okay, infamous, pale, and agreeable. Well, I mean, that that's basically you. <laughs> <laughs> Now it did auto-generate these, but I'm gonna call these ones void because it like overwritten Steph's one. That's also Adam's way of saying he's not feeling wooden, absorbed, and thundering. Oh, I am in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> All right, let's generate three more words for me. For going comfortable and warm. <laughs> well. This might be worse than the previous three. <laughs> I have to admit, it's described me wonderfully. Should we generate a bonus noun each? Um, yeah, if you want. Just one word. Yeah, one noun. Oh, okay, that's fair. <laughs> oh, fiction. Oh, that, that's such a good word, because now you can literally draw anything. Okay. Because it's fiction? That's not I fair! Mean, we're, we're swapping, so we're both going to be working on oh, both Oh, okay. God, that's an easy mode. All right, let's generate one more. Mm-hmm. I like that one. Elegant's a good one. Okay. That's so a good call. These are our two Get that props out, we're going to be way. working with. We've got infamous, pale, agreeable. Yeah, fiction. <laughs> yeah, the agreeable's fiction with you. <laughs> <laughs> and foregoing, comfortable, warm, and elegant. I mean, that just sums me up perfectly. That's a great set of words. I think I need to Google what foregoing means. <laughs> 12 seconds later. Foregoing? Oh, God. <laughs> We nearly had to make an emergency cut there. Previously stated, written, or occurring. Oh, so you, oh, that's great, because you could do something from history, something that's already happened. Okay, well, you seem to be inspired by that. Love that for you. And let's get on to the drawing. <laughs> well, here we go. First is the head, and I wanted to draw a nice little elf head. Nothing too serious, just a cute little round circle. And what did you do? And here I am, I'm doing um, a pretty standard head. I've put in some pretty human looking ears. Oh yeah, because I did an elf, that's true. Yeah, just mixing things up so we've got two different character designs coming out of it. With the torso, I was so impressed with this because this is you and Steph's never drawn a torso on one of my characters, like ever. Yeah, so here I am drawing the torso. I was so confused with how thick to make the neck on this piece. I, I don't normally draw on Adam's characters. I just drawn a bean. <laughs> because I wanted it to look like Steph's like character design. So I just drawn a bean. Yeah, I thought yours looked a lot longer than how I'd <laughs> normally draw mine. Oh, I went ham on the arms though. This is me. And I wanted to do a pose of them holding something, but I don't think Steph read into it too well, as you'll see. There was a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. But I wanted to do like a, a sassy, like uh, confident pose, hopefully holding something. But uh, well, you'll see how it went. I kind of had to improvise and you'll see like how well Steph did. And speaking of you, Oh. Yes. Okay, so this is already uh, a bit of a confusing position to draw arms in. And I really didn't have a clue what to go with. I was also looking at my keywords, infamous, pale, agreeable, fiction. And you didn't know what infamous meant. <laughs> yeah, it turns out I have no idea what infamous means. Keep that in mind throughout this entire prompt, please. It's going to confuse <laughs> you a lot. Now going on to the legs, this is Steph. Again, it was so fascinating watching you draw legs. Oh, I feel like I'd drawn them very sort of stiff and like, you know the old Barbie ones that didn't have like many joints? <laughs> she doesn't have bendable knees. Yes. I think you did a great job because normally like uh, with anatomy and stuff, you like to stylize it. I think you did really well. And with your legs. Now, the arms really confused me. 
So I was like, maybe she sat down holding something. So I went with her kneeling and I was like, surely she's going to do something with the hands and, and arms, right? I was like, oh, the mouth and the nose and the eyes. With the eyes, I kind of just went with what I would normally do in all honesty. Now, I feel like this one is starting to look a lot more like my style, and the other one looks a lot more like your style. I would agree with it, yeah. Maybe we just played into each other's, like, comfort zones, maybe? But I have to admit, when it came to this, the mouth and the nose that you did on this one, I think the styles merged together quite well. I was struggling a bit with this because, like, I was obviously trying to draw a nose that would fit with, like, your character design. Yeah, yeah. So at first I did sort of, like, a big triangle one and it worked in my style but it looked out of place on this character. <laughs> it's so weird you should say that because I went ahead on yours and I gave it a triangle nose. <laughs> I was like, yeah, this looks like something Steph would draw. <laughs> oh my god, with the clothes. Oh! I had such a good time with drawing the clothes on this, guys. Oh my god. Because the idea that I had, going off the prompts that we had, like, warm and elegant, I wanted to do, like, a cozy sort of, like, winter dress or, like, um, a gown kind of thing. So what I wanted to do was give it, like, big, like, fancy elegant bows and little, like, fluff trim and stuff like that. And I was still playing into the original idea that I had, hoping that Steph would catch on to it, because I didn't want to tell her. So I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, we weren't communicating with each other. Not at all, no, no, not at all. <laughs> okay, so this is when I start drawing the clothes in this one. And I'm thinking that she looks kind of young, probably because of like the chibi kind of proportions. And I was looking at the word infamous and fiction. So I thought, <laughs> I bet this character, she's one of those kids at school who is obsessed with rabbits. And Aww. if we're looking for fiction, maybe specifically Peter Rabbit. And I thought, yes, he's infamous. The infamous Peter Rabbit. <laughs> that, e that evil bunny. <laughs> I thought infamous was sort of just like, oh, like a cult following or like... Oh, okay. Popular, but not on the levels of like Shakira. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we, we'll never be as famous as Shakira, do you? So here I am. I'm drawing some like overalls, putting a buddy print on. I've got like a t-shirt with stripes on underneath. It's cute. It gives me Angelica from Rugrats vibes. <laughs> I'm also giving her a ton of um, little plastic bangles because those seem to be like all the rage when you're like a kid. All kinds of different like friendship bracelets. Little like sensory things on your wrists. Yeah, totally. I really like the outfit design uh, that you made for this character. I think it's very cute and very Steph car. <laughs> the hair. Steph busted this out so quick. Look at this. Just boom. And it was... And that's it. It's like... I was so surprised at how how fast Steph did her hair. Because, like, compared to the one that I had to do for this one... Because, again, bear in mind, we keep swapping between the two. I was like... I'm not sure... I'm really not sure how to stylize the hair. Because Steph's hair... She's very good with shapes. Uh, if you look at Steph's artwork, I'm sure you'd see it and agree. And I just couldn't get, like, the whole shapely style down. So what I kind of ended up doing was just, like, the hair that I sort of would do. And then just put more lines in the hair. <laughs> I think that's, like, a, a good way to do it. Because it, it's You're nice to get sort of a mix of our art styles. Oh, accessories, honey. Oh, my God. This is when I realized my full potential. And I just went and put something in her hand. I wanted to give her a microphone. Because my idea was sort of like singing Snow Princess. That's so cute. Okay, so in this one, I realized that Adam had already drawn a ball. And I was like, okay, that's basically... I, I was going to add hair accessories. It, it, wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't be one of our videos had I not broken the rule. But I added a little carrot print onto the ball on her head. And I also added some little bunny ears on a headband. Yeah, that was so cute. Yeah, the whole, like, rabbit theme coming together. I love the little hair. And this is why I also threw in some little bracelets. Because kids are notorious for having, like, friendship bracelets and bangles and all kinds of things from Claire's accessories. I do think with the line art, oh my god, you did such a good job with it. This is like one of my favorite like line things that Steph's ever done. And the line art that you did on this completely blew me away. The brush that I'm actually using on this one is one that I made myself. It's called a waxy crayon. <gasps> is that a Steph brush available on Gum Road? It is! Oh my god, it's amazing! <laughs> it works so well with this. I was when Steph gave me it finished, I was like, oh I'm gonna ruin this. <laughs> I spent quite a long time doing the 
line art on this because there was quite a lot of like little intricate details. There was, yeah. And I was also unsure at this point of like what your direction was with like the bottom part of the dress because it looks entirely sheer, but then you'd see her underpants, and I was like, we can't be having that. So uh, somewhere around here, I start to problem solve that, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> I might put like a slip on underneath, so she's got like a sheer dress, but she's also modestly covered. I love how you call my design it's something that needs to be problem solved. <laughs> See, Hans Steffer design, she's like, oh yeah, we've got a problem here. <laughs> but no, in all honesty though, you did a very good job and you'll see how she like did that with the colouring especially. And it came out so nice. I, I really like this In real one. life, I actually had to take a really big break after this point because I have a lot of like wrist issues. True. And my wrist was really flaring up, so I, I took the night off and I came back to it the next day. <laughs> Meanwhile, I decided to line this one. And I have to admit, I don't think lining is necessarily a strong point of mine, if I'm honest. I've never really thought... I love lining. You, yeah, well, that's the thing, right? Steph loves it, and she's really good at it. I'm one of those people where, and maybe you're the same, where you'll line... Well, you'll sketch something out first, and you really like how the sketch looks, right? And then you're like, okay, let's line it. Let's make it look really good. And then you line it, and it's like, oh, You know, it's like, uh, it, all, all the good... All the good aesthetic is sort of... Does that make sense? It, like, it's all gone, and the lines are just sort of like, ooh, I don't like that. But, um, I persevered. And I carried on and I thought I need to try and do a good job of this because it's it's so like Steph coded and anything that's Steph coded, I'm like, oh, I have a soft spot for. So I kept going. I tried to keep a lot of the line weight the same because I think that with Steph's artwork, that tends to be the case. And then emphasize shadows in like thicker lines and like little dark areas, like, you know, where the sleeves are and things like that. And the eyes, I was thinking like, I, I think she does like block colored in eyes i i like I was, I was like i think but i don't know how i'm gonna color them so that was kind of scary but what i wanted to do was hopefully try and get some kind of like life into the eyes and i thought like i'll do them in like solid black circles but maybe add some like shines to them or a little bit of color or something you know because i'm used to like i like putting lots of different colors in the eyes that i do you know, like, you might, like, fantasy colours, you know, like, purples and pinks and stuff like that. And I was, like, getting really nervous about how I was going to... You'll see, I was getting very nervous about how I was going to colour it, because I'm colourblind, and colouring is fun, but when it's me, it's, it's, it's not, <laughs> it's not necessarily correct. So at this point is when we are doing skin tones. The skin and the eyes, you wanted to do those together. And, oh, I love the colour of the eyes that you pick. Is that how we did it, both the skin and the eyes at the same time? I yeah. Think, I think I did the skin on my character, and you did the skin on this character, and then we swapped, and I did the eyes. Did you? Did I do the skin? I can't remember. Yeah, because I did the skin on my character. Yes, this is me doing... So this is you? Yes, because... I can't even remember. We swapped <laughs> it that many times. <laughs> the key word is pale, so I was like, I'm going to pick like a really pasty pale skin oh! tone for her. <laughs> I really like the skin tone that you picked. <laughs> I think pale... All skin tones are beautiful, and that includes if you are pale. I, I don't like the term pasty. <laughs> I, I thought I'd like give a full-blown anemia. <laughs> oh, oh. Just we, to play into the keywords, since I got the meaning of infamous wrong. Yeah, we love an anemic queen. And you can see the little bit of colour I put on the eyes there as well. Ste oh, you chose such a good colour for the hair. You coloured that hair. I'm pretty sure because this is me using the fill tool to fill it in. I wanted to choose like a dark orange. Since she's a rabbit character, I thought the orange would complement carrots. Oh, so you gave her literal carrot hair. And I accidentally filled the canvas a bunch of times <laughs> as I was doing it. This is definitely me. <laughs> the carrots were taken over. <laughs> Can you explain why you picked the colour hair that you picked? What, the blue one? Because mm -hmm. I like the colour blue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I mean, I guess it kind of like fits in with the cold aesthetic, but I picked it because I like blue. Oh, and this is when we start colouring the clothes. Now, this took quite a while. Yeah, the clothing... I felt sorry for Steph, in all honesty, because the design ended up to be quite intricate and quite, you know, like, elegant following the uh, warm, foregoing, comfortable theme that we had going on. And uh, again, if I do say so myself, the colours that she picked went very well with the blue hair. 
Well, the because um, I wanted to make it match with the color of the hair. I was surprised that you went with like a blue because I chose like a red color for the eyes, and I wouldn't have necessarily chose that color hair to go with the blue eyes. Red. It's like three D glasses. <laughs> So I was like, okay, I'll play into this, and I started to think of like an Elsa kind of color palette. Yes, yes, yes. Because That's what she I wanted. Has, yeah. Like, all the the fluff and the fur and the. That's the what stats. I want. Yes. Oh my god, realizing my vision, honey. That's incredible. I'm and so proud of you. The brush I'm using here is the Steffa marker from my Steffa <gasps> brush pack. From the Steffa brush pack available on Gum Road. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I mean, I hope you're seeing this firsthand, just how good these brushes are. By the way, she's doing a very good job. And then I also use another one of my brushes. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. It might be like the Noisy Noise. And I use that just to put like a bit of texture over at the end because I feel like it sort of gives it a bit more of like a marker texture. Yeah, like that traditional look when you use it on paper. I love yeah. that. That's so good. So as you can see, I've done like the slip thing underneath the dress that took me a while to sort of figure out how I was going to go about doing that. There we go. Um, I also realized at this point that the character didn't actually have like shoes on. And I thought, well, maybe the furry part at the bottom of the dress will cover that up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fine though. We love a queen that goes barefoot on stage. With these, I have to admit, when it came to color in this outfit, I was quite scared because um, Steph did such a good job with the uh, color in on mine that I was, I was terrified that I was going to butcher this. Now, I have to admit, I went deep in my memory and i remember when steph and i had first moved into our second place together and she had an adorable pinafore and a yellow top and i just envisioned that and drawn bunnies on it <laughs> oh you were going for yellow no is that not yellow <laughs> it's a bit of a limey greeny no it's halfway between yellow and green but it works because the oh. character was based on rabbits and carrots, and carrots are green at the top, so I thought you were going for the colour No, block. I was being colour blind! <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to include this as rendering and shading. Uh, again, personally, because I think Steph did a very good job <laughs> at bringing it all together and, like, making it one cohesive thing. Because um, with flats, uh, I mean, so, uh, don't get me wrong, something can look really pretty in flats and stuff, but when you get into rendering and shading and stuff and you can add depth and things, I think that's when something like really comes to life personally. And Steph did, again, such a good job at this stage. I really wanted to like emphasis it, especially with the uh, little extra skirt. What did you call that? That extra skirt? The modesty skirt? Like the little slip underneath. Is it a slip? But I call it a modesty oh, yeah. skirt. Oh yeah, here I am using like the noisy noise style brush to put in like a bunch of... The Noisy Noise brush. Oh. From the Steffa Socks brush. <laughs> yes. Available on Gum Road. Oh, it just looks, it looks beautiful. I, I've always, well, you guys know I'm probably biased, but I've always loved how Steph's coloured things. And you know, our styles over time have developed and changed and got, and got very different. But one thing I've always admired is how Steph colours things. It's just beautiful to me. I love it. Here I am colouring in a shirt that I think's yellow and it's bloody green. It's a yellowy green, I'll give you that. It's terrible. Oh. It's not terrible. So I went in, I just, because like I'm colorblind, I kind of cheated. I made a multiply layer and I went over it with colors that were very similar, which isn't, well, is it cheating? I mean, I think it turned out all right, but yeah, there are better ways to pick It's definitely not colors. cheating. You just work into like your own strengths. I think it's interesting seeing how your digital process is different to mine. You promise? Yeah. You need to sit me down and t teach me what yellow is again, because I'm mortal. <laughs> Does that mean her ears are green too? The bunny ears. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, no. <laughs> it's cute. Oh, well, I guess it's because, well, it's a romantic, it's two romantic collabs, technically. And uh, as long as you think it looks all right, hun, that's the main thing. Do you guys mind green ears? If you have green ears or green things in your ears, you might want to go see a doctor, but I, oh, I can't believe that's green. I'm looking at it now and I'm like, it is, it is, is the hair bow green? Yes. No! Oh god! Oh, I'm so annoyed. <laughs> and the bunnies on the pinafore are green. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for the background, I wanted to f fully realize the fact that this character is meant to be an Arctic pop star. So I wanted to draw her basically on stage with lots of people like in the background. I realized when I was doing this, uh, she's singing with her back to them. <laughs> she's shy. <laughs> so, yeah, she's shy. She's, uh, and so, um, I mean, 
I, I guess it kind of works. I wanted to give them like a ton of glow sticks as well. Because yeah, have you seen those like um, like VTuber concerts and everyone has glow sticks? They look really. Can cool. I just say that the color palette for this? I thought you were going for the Aurora Borealis. Aurora Borealis. However you pronounce it. In isolated in this concert. I think it works because that happens over in sort of. Uh, in the Arctic. Yeah. With the colder cold climate. Oh my god, you did such a good job with this. <laughs> Oh, I love how Steph draws, like, gardens and vegetables and, like, that whole aesthetic. So, Adam had drawn some zigzags on the hand, so you can interpret this however you want. It, she might be squashing a bug. Which, it's because... It's you Schrodinger's did. bug. Okay, we don't know because we cannot see inside her hands, but she might be infamous for squashing bugs and also liking Peter Rabbit. She's got to be infamous for something because you didn't do any infamy at all. She's, so I which, thought, oh, maybe she's caught something. To be fair... Uh, Peter Rabbit, the whole like Beatrix Potter series, if you didn't grow up with those. Some of those stories were pretty horrifying. There was yeah. always like other animals killing other animals. It had like a Farvin Wood kind of vibe. It was, it was a war zone in Beatrix Potter's <laughs> mind. <laughs> so anyway, I put mine in like a little carrot garden to emphasize like the bunny girl. The green rabbit. But it does also mean that it could be a bug in her hands because where do you find bugs? You can find them in the garden. In her hands, because she's infamous, isn't she? <laughs> now, here is the finished artwork. And for for the, like a challenge that we've never done, I think we did a pretty good job, actually. If you enjoyed this video, we've got more romantic collabs oh, oh, oh. where we share art prompts together, which I will put down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe so we can see you next time for another Doodle Date. Doodle Date.